Today, I'm going to be giving you the most conclusive game user settings video on YouTube. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to be easy. I'm going to make it as efficient as possible while also ensuring you're optimizing absolutely everything in the back end of your game. So yeah, there'll be definitely things in this video that people haven't covered, but getting straight into it, you want to go on your desktop. You want to type in run, click here. If you don't have this, just type it in here, but you should definitely have run. Type in percent local app data percent. Press OK. Press F on your keyboard or just scroll down and find Fortnite game. Go to saved, config, Windows client, and then you should find game user settings. You want to right click this, go to properties and ensure that read only is unticked in the attribute section. Then press apply. Okay. And now we can open this up and get editing. Now, this is going to be in my discord server, the entire file, but please. And I mean, I can't stress this enough. Do not just go ahead and download it and not watch the video because you will run into issues. You will run into issues because everyone's PCs are different and some things will need tweaking. These are optimized for my PC and I have a pretty high-end PC. If you're confident you have that too, go ahead, just download it. But I did just want to let you know that it is in my Discord. You can get it there quicker and then just edit it. Also, if you want to drag it in and replace it and then make those edits, all you need to do is download the file from my Discord, drag it literally into this folder, the Windows client folder, and replace it. You can like get rid of the old one. You don't need it anymore. If you run into any problems in my Discord server, in the announcements channel, I do have all these fixed for like potential errors you may run into. But again, if you watch this video, you won't have that problem. But getting into the good stuff, scrolling down here. First of all, we have motion blur. Of course, have this turned off on false. Some of these are like self-explanatory and some will be mind boggling. Show grass, have this on false. I know it sounds counterintuitive, like you want to see the grass. No, trust me, have it on false. I do want to mention that some of these are placebo. Show FPS, I have mine on true. GPU crash debugging, have that on false. Stop rendering in background, false. Latency tweak one and latency tweak week two. I have one on false and two on zero. This is equivalent to NVIDIA reflex latency or low reflex latency. I'm sure you've all heard of it. If you haven't, it works solely for GeForce RTX series cards and primarily G-Sync monitors to deliver the quote unquote lowest latency and best response time to competitive games. What it does is it optimizes and measures system latency and gives like target acquisition and basically targets frames better for quicker reaction times. Now, as much as that sounds great, we're going to be running performance mode so we cannot activate it through the game in this case but i do recommend you turn on in your nvidia control panel which is a completely different thing i will leave a link down below to a video that goes over all of that i highly recommend you watch it but yeah having this on twofold is going to do the complete opposite it will actually induce latency anti-aliasing of course have that disabled temporal super resolution quality you want that on custom literally just write in custom and then pretty much all these values here are going to dictate that now as you can see this relates to dlss quality Quality, which you will see in like DirectX 11, I think, or I think maybe DirectX 12 only. I'm not too sure. But if you haven't seen that, you've definitely heard of ray tracing. Again, it's another RTX thing. So if you have a lower end GPU anyway, this does not benefit you. But to be sure, what we do is we set this to zero, nanite false. Honestly, the easiest thing to do is just to copy these settings. They're going to cause major FPS issues. Moving on, these energy saving modes have them on false. We do not want to be saving any energy because that is a power efficiency mode. And what that does is it caps your game, it constantly ensures that you are not getting your peak performance. And now a really exciting one, display gamma, one that is not talked about enough. This technically speaking is a setting that controls or dictates from your game how your display's brightness relates to how the human eye perceives color. Now it definitely sounds interesting, but putting it basically, it, it adjusts the relationship between the brightness of the image you are receiving. And it's indicated by a curve from black to white. So it's almost like the transition from like black to white, if that makes sense. And if this is too high or too low, either you're going to have a really dark looking game or a really bright looking game. And the brightness in this case is almost like overexposure or underexposure. It can really make and break an image. Like in a competitive sense, this could be the difference of, you know, not seeing someone in a bush or in a dark area of the map and in turn being eliminated because of that. But quite simply, this changes and it's quite annoying. Fortnite will like release an update and it can affect this value. So you want to consistently check it or there's something you can do to lock in these settings so they do not change on updates. I'll show you that at the end. But you want to set this to 2.2 with five zeros at the end. So just one, two, three, four, five, and try that out. But if you want a more darker and richer looking game, you can set it to 2.1, but this value is best for performance and it does make a difference. Now scrolling all the way down here, we have disable mouse acceleration. Now, what you want to do is have this on true, like per definition or per what it says, disable mouse acceleration. You do not want to be using mouse acceleration. And I do just want to stress this and show you right now, if you type in a uh, mouse and go to your mouse settings, 
existing windows. And if you scroll down to additional mouse settings and go to pointers or sorry, pointer options, please, please, please ensure that this right here, enhance pointer precision is turned off. It's going to ruin your aim. I had a friend who had this on and I've seen immense differences since. Now this right here does not disable it in Windows and it does not enable it either. So as long as you've done what I've just shown you, this really is more of a placebo because your game cannot overwrite that. But just in case for peace of mind, I always said it's true. Scrolling down even further, be auto launch full game, have that on false if you do not use save the world or anything of that sort. Also, I completely forgot to mention, but if you press control F or go to edit and find, you can search up all these things to get to them easier because it can be quite hard scrolling and trying to read. Allow video playback, highly, highly important. Have this on false. What it's going to do is any intros you get when you launch the game or if there's a promo and there's like some kind of cutscene pop-up thing. Yeah, this will get rid of that. Uh, maybe you like them, but in my opinion, they get very annoying. Use VSync, definitely have this on false unless you have a low end PC or a low end setup in general. So like a 60 hertz monitor and you get less than 60 FPS or you struggle to get 60 FPS then maybe have this on any other otherwise yeah definitely turn it off resolution size x and y set this to native it's honestly for fps it is the best at least compared to stretch resolution preferred full screen mode have this on one which is full screen audio quality level mine is on zero this is equivalent to high now if you have a low end pc or you honestly do struggle for frames and that's probably why you're watching this video set this to one which is actually equivalent of having on low you will actually save a bit of fps there frame rate limit a really really big one it's highly like this is like a controversial one but the rule of thumb is that if you have a low end pc have it set to unlimited which is actually just zero so keep it on zero if it's already at zero or set it to zero with five zeros after it or sorry no six zeros after it so 0 0.00000 i think if you literally just put a zero it will automatically put these values uh behind it but zero zero really at the end of the day i don't think this is the make or break but low end pc 60 hertz monitor unlimited if you have a mid-tier pc cap at your refresh rate assume that it's not 60 hertz so for 75 5 hertz, I'd cap at 120. For 144 hertz, I'd cap at 165 FPS. And for 240 hertz, just set it to 240. And if you are like me and have a high end PC, either use Unlimited, which I'm using, or put it to 360. If you're a competitive player and you play tournaments and you notice that in end games you're getting FPS drops, that'll probably be the fix. But for the average player on a high end PC, especially in creative, you'll get the lowest latency with Unlimited. Now, closing it out, scalability groups. This is incredibly important. Probably the most important group of settings in this video if you are on native resolution what you want to do is have this set to either 75 or 85 dependent on how bad you're struggling for frames again for someone with a high npc like me it's not, it's not a big deal but if you're struggling and you don't want to use stretch resolution because honestly in most cases stretch actually does not really improve your fps that much or really at all have this set to like 75 or 80 if you are using stretch though just have it on 99 i guess the idea here is that just don't have it on 100 it sounds silly and you may think, well, the difference of one isn't going to change your frames. It really does. You would be surprised. Just try it out. And everything else you want on zero besides view distance, potentially. Now, if you have anything other than a low end PC, have it on one, which in game is equivalent to medium. But if you have a bad CPU and you know you have a bad CPU, just put it on zero. Now, the reason in most cases you want it on one, if you don't have a bad CPU and you have a little bit better than a low end PC is because what it can actually do in this case, where your CPU can handle it, it can render a frame. So something in the distance, like a weapon, a little bit faster. And what that will do is as you run over to it, or let's say there's a build fight, right? And someone's building in the distance, it can render like weapons on the floor and things that are around the build. And this like kind of, you know, build fight that's going on a little bit faster. And what that will do is when you run over to the fight, it's not trying to render it when you're potentially 1v1ing a player or getting third partied or, you know, you're in battle. You don't want it rendering a gun that's on the floor next to you while that's happening because it can drop your frame. You want all that to render ideally way, way before. But definitely don't put this any higher because of that. Medium is a sweet spot where if you go any higher, it will just start rendering too much at too far of a distance away. And what that would do is just kind of, you'll always be dropping FPS. It's always trying to render something. And chat settings, a lot of these are like notifications as well. And what these can do is actually prevent hitches. So having most of these off or set to false, it will prevent hitches. But if you use it a lot, you're always playing with friends, you're inviting each other from game and you want to see the 
those invites. Don't worry about this. And that is it. What you want to do is exit this, press save. I'm not going to because I've already done so. And to lock in these settings, if you need to, what you can do is right click it, go to properties and ensure that read only uh, right here is ticked and just press apply. And as a much needed bonus, if you go into your Epic Games launcher, you click these three dots here and go over to options to ensure these all correspond with the game user settings you've just set. What you want to do is make sure that ideally only Fortnite Core and Battle Royale is ticked. The rest you can untick unless you really, really want to play Save the World. And you know, definitely high resolution textures have the off. Direct next half shaders have the off. In this case, we're not using them. We're on performance mode and pre-download stream assets have this on. What it will do is things like skins. It will download them before you launch your game and not have them like downloading in the background in bulk as you're in game. And also sometimes these languages will just be ticked for no reason. You can disable them. And yeah, press apply and you're all good to go.